Welcome everyone to Midday Magazine for this January 16th, 2024. I have your host, James J. Mayloff here. At 3.30, we're going to welcome in our friends from the United Way. Looking forward to catching up with them. Right now, our great friend, Ashley Hagenow, 76th Annual Alice in Dairyland with us right now. Ashley, how you doing? I am doing well. I'll be a little bit chilly because it is it is chilly out there. It's the winter wonderland, but thankfully... I have plenty of provisions to keep me going, and I hope the same goes for you. I appreciate you not only being on the air with us, but you're doing this uh, from indoors, so we don't have the teeth chattering. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ashley, uh, especially with the traveling you do in this kind of weather, uh, we certainly want to remind. I appreciate the note that you uh, kind of started our show with in our pregame. I hope everybody's staying warm out there. Be safe, and uh, uh, many of you Wisconsinites out there, you've been through this before. This ain't your first winter. Uh, make sure that you have all your things you need in the back of your car, your truck, and you're ready to go. And be prepared for Mother Nature. Exactly right. No, it's important to have water, snacks, blankets, extra coats, boots, hats, gloves, the whole nine yards to make sure that when winter weather hits, as it certainly has over the last few days, we are all prepared together. Yeah, well said. Ashley, uh, as you do travel the state, uh, we get the chance, when we get the chance to talk to you, uh, to highlighting different things about Wisconsin, things that uh, not only Wisconsinites can take pride in, but really learn about. And I love when we get a chance to talk ginseng. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm so excited to chat about ginseng as well, to share more about this unique, unique commodity for Wisconsin ways to use it, and resources where you can learn more because it is such an important commodity for the state of Wisconsin, especially our agricultural industry. Hmm. And this is a perfect time not only to, to be talking about this, but to have you on the air with the Chinese New Year and everything. And I think that's where we'll start. Yes, the Chinese New Year is coming up here in just a few weeks, and we are celebrating Wisconsin ginseng because of the Chinese New Year, which officially starts on February 10th and lasts until February 24th. With the Chinese New Year, this holiday is celebrated across Asia, and each country has its own customs and traditions. And certainly Wisconsin ginseng plays a very important role in the Chinese New Year each and every year. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley, uh, Wisconsin is well known for its ginseng pro production, but why is now the best time to celebrate this unique Wisconsin commodity? With the Chinese New Year, I love the chance to highlight just how important of a role ginseng plays in Wisconsin's agricultural industry. Wisconsin is known for being the number one producer of many different agricultural commodities. And as Alice in Dairyland, I enjoy the chance to promote the diversity and abundance of Wisconsin agriculture wherever I go. And that includes Wisconsin ginseng, as ginseng is one of Wisconsin's number one crops, in addition to cheese, cranberries, green beans, and a few other key commodities. In fact, we produce 98% of all cultivated ginseng in the United States. That's 98% wow. for the United States. And then we also grow 10% of the world's supply of ginseng, with the majority of our Wisconsin ginseng being produced in Marathon County. <laughs> so right there just goes to show the immense impact that ginseng has on the state of Wisconsin, on our nation, and truly across the world. That 98% really stands out. Yeah. Oh, it does. And, and I was going to say 98%, that's such an incredible figure when we think about how unique of a crop ginseng is. And we are able to grow so many different types of ginseng here in Wisconsin due to our natural resource base, our climate, and our geography. That truly makes Wisconsin an ideal state for growing this specialty crop. Hmm. Uh, and as far as celebrating Wisconsin ginseng because of the, Christ, uh, the Chinese New Year, uh, that, that's, go, that's going on. That's a, a perfect time to be doing it. It certainly is. And we can celebrate the Chinese New Year in many ways here in the United States as 2024 is the year of the dragon. And in China, it is the most important festival. It's a time for feasts, gifting, and a time for family. 
And I like to think we can celebrate that here close to home as well. Popular rituals during the Chinese New Year include include serving food that symbolizes good fortune and making resolutions concerning what one hopes to accomplish in the next year. So when we celebrate New Year and New Year's Eve each year, the Chinese New Year has many different, many similarities when it comes to spending time with loved ones, goal setting, and really think about what you want to accomplish in the year ahead. Hmm. Well said. Uh, Ashley, have you ever gotten to see a, uh, a Chinese New Year celebration or parade? I have not, mm. but I certainly would love the chance to at some point in the future, especially since I had the chance to travel to China earlier this year while wow. serving as Alice in Dairyland with the Ginseng Board of Wisconsin. So I had the chance to travel to Taiwan, mainland China, and also Hong Kong promoting Wisconsin agriculture and promoting Wisconsin ginseng. So I would love to get back at some point and maybe during the Chinese New Year to witness those celebrations in person. Uh, I'd love to talk with you more sometime about that trip. Uh, that is really fascinating. That's really interesting. The The parades are awesome. They're so colorful and beautiful, but the best part, dragons. They've got dragons. They got man-made dragons running around. It's awesome. It's so cool. You got to check it out sometime. Uh, oh, I'll have to. And with it, with it being the year of the dragon in 2024, I'm sure there will even be more dragons yeah, on display yes, yeah. during some of those festivals and celebrations. Mm-hmm. Now, what are some ways to use Wisconsin ginseng to kind of help celebrate this or just to use it in general? When it comes to using Wisconsin ginseng, whether it's during the Chinese New Year or really every day as part of our daily routine, there are so many ways to use Wisconsin ginseng. And in the role of Alice in Dairyland, I have learned so much about Wisconsin ginseng and ways to use this product over the last six months or so. So Wisconsin ginseng, you can use it in tea. You can take it in a capsule form. You can grind it into powder or oftentimes it's sliced for steeping or cooking. We slice the root very thinly. And those are just a few ways that we can use Wisconsin ginseng, especially when it comes to traditional Chinese medicine practices, as it is most commonly used in countries such as China, Korea, and Japan. And in Western cultures, we might use this as a dietary supplement or a botanical element. It's really, you can use this amazing product in so many ways. And I really enjoy learning more about different recipes that we can use Wisconsin ginseng in. And one of those recipes is for a cherry morning smoothie, which I absolutely love smoothies and all of the different flavors and ingredients that go into them. And you can use Wisconsin ginseng in smoothies as well. So the recipe that I have for a cherry morning smoothie, it uses bananas, spinach, coconut, vanilla extract, Greek yogurt, blueberries, cherries, and then you add in a little bit of Wisconsin ginseng powder. You blend all of these ingredients together, and then it's really ready to be enjoyed. It only takes about five or so minutes to put all of those ingredients together and enjoy a delicious smoothie in the form of a cherry morning smoothie that uses Wisconsin ginseng. Ooh, that sounds good. Man, that sounds I got to try that. I have to try that. <laughs> I, I am. It is. It's really good. <laughs> I'm, I cannot stress that enough. I have to try that. That sounds so good. And now I can make it myself. Thanks for the recipe. That's very cool. You are so welcome. Um, what about, uh, it, uh, oh, and I do want to remind people they can find that and other recipes at realwisconsinginseng.com, realwisconsinginseng.com. Just get that out there one more time. Um, where can we go to find more information about Wisconsin ginseng and ways we can enjoy it? If you would like to I kind of just gave him the answer, didn't Wisconsin I? I kinda... <laughs> ginseng. Hey, we will reiterate it. That's what's so important. <laughs> but if you would like to learn more, and in addition to recipes on the Real Wisconsin Ginseng website, you can learn so much about how we grow Wisconsin ginseng. Mm. Meet some of the growers of Wisconsin ginseng in our state. Learn more about where we send our Wisconsin ginseng to, in addition to recipes. So again, that online resource, it is the ginseng board of Wisconsin's website, realwisconsinginseng.com. That is your one-stop shop for all things Wisconsin ginseng. You can also follow the ginseng board of Wisconsin on Instagram and Facebook. They are very active on both of those social media platforms. 
promoting Wisconsin ginseng facts and ways to use Wisconsin ginseng and recipes. And also, while we are in the midst of our Alice in Dairyland campaign highlighting Wisconsin ginseng, you can go ahead and follow Alice in Dairyland on social media to continue increasing your knowledge about this very unique and very important specialty root crop for the state of Wisconsin. I really appreciate that information, Ashley. Uh, we, we've got a little bit of time left, and I'd like to talk about some other things with you, if you don't mind. Uh, you did have some additional information about the Chinese New Year that I thought was quite interesting. When it comes to the Chinese New Year, again, this is celebrated across Asia, and Wisconsin ginseng is definitely a central focus or a key role, a, a key component of the Chinese New Year. When it comes to celebrating each country's own traditions and customs. As we talked about, we both love dragons. 2024 is the year of the dragon to be celebrated during the Chinese New Year. And in China and other countries across Asia, it is one of the most important festivals to celebrate. We celebrate feasts and gift giving and a time for family, friends, and loved ones during the Chinese New Year, and it's a perfect time of year to get together and celebrate all that we are thankful for in the year that was just completed, while also looking forward to the future and what resolutions we can maybe make when it comes to what we hope to accomplish in the next year. Hmm. So again, the Chinese New Year celebrated across Asia. It's a great time to celebrate Wisconsin ginseng as well and a great way for us to get together with family, friends, and loved ones, especially in countries such as China, where it is most celebrated. Mm. Ginseng is such a, uh, a, a universal thing and such a, a world-known thing, but the the fact that it, it, you know, to think of people in other countries uh, using our ginseng from here, uh, in that it's such a humbling feeling. It's such a, it, you take a lot of pride in it, but it's also got a humbling feel to it as well. It does. And when I was in China and had the ability and the opportunity to meet consumers of Wisconsin ginseng, that for me was one of the most rewarding parts of the trip and also serving as Alice in Dairyland because it's not often that you get to meet consumers of a certain product that your state is known for halfway across the world. So having the chance to hear what Everyone loves so much about Wisconsin ginseng. We are known for a very high quality product and a very bitter flavor that is well recognized all over the world. And having the chance to hear the stories of why consumers continue to purchase and use Wisconsin ginseng was very rewarding. And in turn, our group with the Ginseng Board of Wisconsin that was traveling together, we had the amazing opportunity to tell the story of Wisconsin agriculture and Wisconsin ginseng, what makes our state so special for growing a product like ginseng? And it was such a rewarding experience. It's it's really smart on them, too, to have, uh, you know, people from the area be able to talk about it, be able to sell it. Nobody could nobody could talk about it. Nobody can promote it or, or uh, give you the details that people from the area or people, Wisconsinites, could be able to give to that. That's very cool to hear. I I also wanted to mention, too, because you, you brought up some great, wonderful points about ginseng. Um, there, there are so many key ingredients that are used in a lot of not only traditional Chinese medicine, but as we're, we have adopted here in the West with a lot of it. One of the things that I've learned uh, from our friends at Family Natural Foods was ginseng is also not a bad snack. Like I like I like gnawing on, I like chewing on little bits of ginseng. It's, it helps boost your energy. It's good for the immune system. Yes, and there are so many newer products as well that incorporate Wisconsin ginseng. There's ginseng chews, ginseng candies. When we were traveling abroad, I had the chance to try so many different foods that use Wisconsin ginseng, such as soups and breads and other baked goods, desserts. There was also some little snacks kind of in the appetizer side of things where they had mushrooms and bread and it was infused with Wisconsin ginseng. It was so, so delicious. So there are so many new and exciting ways to use Wisconsin ginseng to really make it a part of your daily routine and your daily life, which I think is really exciting for this product going into the future. Yeah, it not only is uh, could be better, it could help you with uh, not only a m- number of the things that Ashley and I have been talking about, but you're also going to be able to take pride and feel good about supporting a Wisconsin-made product. 
And that's really what it's all about. When you consume and purchase Wisconsin ginseng, you are helping to support our approximately 200 Wisconsin ginseng growers and support the local economy here in Wisconsin, especially when it comes to the agricultural industry. So it's a win-win truly on all sides, in my opinion. Perfect. We're speaking with Ashley Hagenow, a 76th annual Allison Dairyland. And as much as we don't like thinking about this too much, we will have to introduce a 77th eventually. Um, we we, we uh, love talking with you, Ashley. But eventually, somebody's going to else is going to have to wear that crown. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, people applying for it and give them kind of a rundown, a timeline of how to apply and different notes that they may need to know about uh, qualifying for this and, uh, and that. Well, and I am so excited to share more about the application and running process for the 77th Allison Dairyland. It's hard to believe that about six months into my year of service, we are already beginning preparations to select that next individual who will serve in the role of Allison Dairyland. But it's a very exciting time, and it's really rewarding for me to prepare to welcome our next group of applicants top candidates, and ultimately our next Alice in Dairyland to serve in this incredible role. So starting first with the application process, applications officially opened for the 77th Alice in Dairyland on January 2nd, and they will officially close on January 31st. So we are right in the middle of our application period with applications being open for the 77th Alice in Dairyland. And if you are someone who is a Wisconsin resident, is female, is at least 21 years of age, and has at least three years of experience in marketing, public relations, education, and communication on behalf of agriculture or even outside of the industry, then you will qualify to apply for the role of Alice in Dairyland. Hmm. So that's the initial process is the application. And again, they're open right now through January 31st. With uh, some of those, like uh, the experience with public speaking and, and those, Ashley, when you came into this position, did you have a good body of experience with some of that? Or was that one of those things that you were still learning? You're, you're so young, I imagine that it's something that uh, you're, you're learning as much as you have experience with. It's definitely a little bit of both. Having ran for Alice in Dairyland last year to be selected as the 76th Alice in Dairyland I was so fortunate from a young age to get a lot of experience in public speaking and communication skills, especially through being involved in 4-H and FSA and participating in speaking contests such as leadership development events in FFA and judging dairy cattle and presenting sets of oral reasons in 4-H and serving as a Wisconsin State FFA officer, which allowed me to gain so many incredible leadership and public speaking skills. So those were some of the experiences that I had when starting in the role of Alice in Dairyland. And from day one, when you start in this role, you are always growing and always developing your public speaking skills and all other skills that you use each and every day as Alice in Dairyland. I can truthfully say I have grown so much already from this experience and it will continue to until my final day serving as the 76th Alice in Dairyland. Hmm. So certainly if you are an applicant and a top candidate for Alice, you have likely had some experiences growing up that have allowed you to gain different skills in those key areas of public speaking, communications and marketing. But if selected, you will continue to grow in those areas and you'll grow as a top candidate as well with some new programs that we've had in place for the past few years. So you truly gain so much from the experience and you learn so much along the way as well. If you are fortunate and you're one of the six qualified candidates to ask to move on to the next step, what is the next step in the process? So after you apply and submit an application for Alice in Dairyland, from there we have a preliminary interview that is towards the end of February is when those preliminary interviews will take place for the 77th Alice in Dairyland. After those preliminary interviews is when we select our top candidates. We have anywhere between five to six top candidates each year. And when you are a top candidate for Alice in Dairyland, you undergo this amazing journey to learn more about Wisconsin agriculture, Alice in Dairyland, 
how to prepare for the role of Alice in Dairyland and what the day-to-day -day roles and responsibilities look like of serving in this role. Once you are selected as a top candidate at the press briefing, which will take place the first weekend in March in Door County, that will then begin an eight week long journey where we have weekly trainings and top candidates complete weekly assignments leading up to the Alice and Dairyland finals. So if you are a top candidate, you gain so many skills in marketing and communications and you actually earn a certificate now through the Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection here in Wisconsin as a result of going through that experience. That's a pretty um, nice and, and pretty cool thing to be able to uh, give to not only people in this position, but for the for people that, you know, going on after this position, to have that on your resume is, is, is quite the note right there. It is, and that was why we decided to form a marketing and communications certification from being a top candidate for Alice in Dairyland, as we recognize that all top candidates going through this experience gain so many critical skills that they can apply to any career, whether it's inside or outside of the agricultural industry. And you also build such a vast network from being a top candidate that definitely plays such an important role moving forward in all of our careers, whether selected as Alice in Dairyland or not. And then the final interview process will take place in May. And in early May, the candidates travel to host uh, the final step, to get to the final step. As we continue preparations for the 77th Alice in Dairyland Finals, those official dates of the finals taking place in Door County this year at Stone Harbor Resort in Sturgeon Bay, those specific dates are May 2nd through the 4th of 2024. And there are public facing events where if you would like to purchase tickets and attend the Alice in Dairyland finals, you can certainly do so. And those public facing events are Friday, May 3rd and Saturday, May 4th with a few different components of the finals that will be made available to the public. And if you are interested in attending the Alice in Dairyland finals to support maybe someone in your life who will be running for Alice in Dairyland or just to attend and learn more about this incredible process, all of the information for the Alice in Dairyland finals can be found on our website, aliceindairyland.com. Mm. And again, uh, you want to learn about that uh, cherry morning smoothie that I cannot wait to try or anything else uh, that uh, recipe-wise that she has on there. RealWisconsinGinseng.com is a wonderful website to find that recipe and others. And uh, the blog that you guys do too, Alice, uh, uh, Ashley, it's a fantastic blog as well. Well, thank you so much. And we certainly keep our blog as up-to-date as possible with my current travels across Wisconsin and also some key topics related to agriculture at various points of the year. So all of that information, Alice in Dairyland finals info, just current initiatives with the Alice in Dairyland program and our blog and everything else related to our program can be found on aliceindairyland.com. Always appreciate the time. Thanks so much, Ashley. We're looking forward to seeing you and talking with you again real soon. Thank you so much. Stay warm out there. It was a pleasure chatting today. You as well. Stay warm. Safe travels. We'll talk soon. Coming up next, we've got a great guest coming up on Midday Magazine. We've got our friends from the United Way coming right up here on WFHR Locally Grown Radio.